So we're out here today at CPAC 2020. Um, you are Jared Holt, you work for Right Wing Watch. Can you tell me a little bit more about your work and what your experience at CPAC so far has been? Uh, so I've been covering CPAC for a number of years now. Uh, I work for an organization. What we do is track right-wing movements in the United States. I have sort of a focus on both extremism and also kind of how that interacts with the digital space. Uh, so I'm out here looking for both any known members of kind of extremist movements that I've seen and also just trying to get a feel. This year I'm really focused on uh, what conservatives are saying about tech platforms and tech censorship. Uh, so yeah. Well, I know, so I listened to a couple of the events too, a little bit about tech censorships. Conservatives say they are shadow banned and censored, and uh, do you disagree? Do you not think that's happening online, or? I think, you know, a lot of what we hear in support of that is anecdotal. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, this person had an issue, Facebook says maybe it's human error. Um, I know I YouTube's been messing with their algorithms a lot. I don't know if it's specifically targeting conservatives, but we've been seeing some of that tech censorship. Are you concerned about any of the stuff that we see going on in YouTube? Um, I'm not as familiar with that. Um, I know the algorithms are hurting a lot of people. They're really trying to, from what I'm gaining, uh, put some of the more corporate brands forward, like NBC and that sort of thing. And a Big lot, media. a lot of independent creators are being hurt by that. Um, but I haven't seen any evidence that it's on an ideological basis. Um, and, and that's really sort of what the claim is that's being put forward. But they haven't seen to be able to substantiate it with any sort of uh, metrics and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So we've only been here for about a day and a half, maybe two days. The conference has a couple more days, but I wanted to ask you, have you found a lot of extremism or any extremism here at CPAC? I found a few people um, every year. You know, this is a big conservative event, if not like the biggest one. So you'll, you get all kinds of different parts of the conservative movement come here and try to get their sliver of the spotlight, get their little bit of press attention. Um, I have seen some extremist groups, but they're not uh, particularly prominent. Uh, security was increased this year. I don't know if that deterred them from trying to get in. So uh, do you think there's like a large percentage of either extreme or like white nationalists or white supremacists like here being involved or being preached here? Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think that's the mainstream. I think it's, uh, it's a fringe that very desperately tries to seek attention and tries to disrupt and kind of force their agenda into the conversation. Um, but I don't have the impression that most people here really think that way or really uh, support that movement. Absolutely, because it feels like a lot of people talk about Trump supporters. I know where this is a conservative conference, but people talk about Trump supporters like that. So that's why I asked that question. I also wanted to ask, so we're seeing the rise of political violence here in the United States. Do you condemn political violence though over at Right Wing Watch? Yeah, absolutely. Political violence is just not acceptable. It's not how you know, civilized adults should be. On both be, sides. Should be, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I wanted to give you a specific event now, though. Andy No was attacked by Antifa in Portland while covering the event. Would you condemn the political violence against uh, Andy No? I think what happened to Andy was terrible. Yeah. I, and you condemn that violence? I, I don't think that was appropriate. I, I don't think that should have been done. Absolutely. Yeah. Nice. Um, I also know many people talk about Right Wing Watch covering um, the more extreme elements um, of the party. Can you tell me who you think like the extreme members are? Um, Name I, them, I, because we I don't want to hide in the shadows. Like, Who are the people who are leading the wrong parts of the conservative movement, or the more extreme or white national, uh, nationalist elements? Um, so what I've been sort of watching, there's kind of uh, the early stages of like a alt-right 2.0 coalition type thing happening with uh, the younger section of the white nationalist movement. We saw the established part of it, the Richard Spencers, the Matt Heimbachs of the world, have really fallen out of grace. Uh, they're in the middle of lawsuits, their public reputations are destroyed, and they have no political traction really, uh, and not really much of a following either. Yeah. Do you guys work to deplatform those people? Is uh, the goal to deplatform de these people? The goal is not to deplatform. Um, sometimes deplatforming happens when we're looking for answers. We don't, you know, ask companies to deplatform. Uh, if something is going against the policy, sometimes I'll, I will send an email and say, "Hey, this is. You say the policy is this. This is happening. Like, I'm trying to figure out where the lines are." And that's just kind of a broader issue with like moderation online in general. It's just not very consistent, uh, and it's not very transparent. 
So I wanted to ask you another question. I know you're from Right Wing Watch, but some people are also concerned about extremism on the left. So do you think there are any figures on the left that we should also be concerned with? Are there any extremists working with any maybe of the presidential candidates who are running now um, among the Democrats? Is there any concern from the left as well? Um, to be honest, I spend most of my time, you know, it's my job to watch the right wing. And I'm really not super familiar with like all the nuances of what's happening on the left. Sure. Um, but like so, mainstream figures, i.e. Bernie Sanders right now has brought on Linda Sarsour as a surrogate. This is somebody who people on the right and left both call anti-Semitic and both call extreme. Do you think that's a concern that there's some extremists both on the left wing as well? In the left wing as well? I, I mean, sure, I guess it could be a concern, um, but I, I don't know enough because, about the background. I mean, Linda Sarsour uses language um, talking about Jews that compares um, Zionism to Nazism. I know she's called um, Zionist Jewish supremacists. She uses the same language as David Duke, who I'm sure you're familiar with. Right. So if this person uses the same language as David Duke, do you think there's any cause of concern from left-wing figures as well? Well, sure, that should be a concern. Yeah. You know, that kind of rhetoric is, uh, you know, not appropriate. And I would hope that, you know, I, I'm trusting you that you're giving me the facts, right? And but, I hope you do your yeah, research, too, yeah, but you yeah. aren't familiar with any of this stuff from Linda Sarsour, somebody who's involved in media and keeps up with, I'm assuming, the presidential campaigns. I, this isn't a fringe figure, Linda Sarsour. Right, but I don't track people on the left, so I, that's not where I spend my time researching. But assuming what you're saying is correct, I don't think you have any reason to lie. Um, yeah, I definitely... So only bigots on the right. Only bigots on the right are the people you are concerned with. Well, it's called right-wing watch, you know? Sure, yeah. yeah. But bigotry in general is a horrible thing. You're not, only con you're not concerned mainly about bigotry, you're concerned about bigotry from the right. We have a, we have a focus on our publication. That's, we have a, a niche that we do. Mm -hmm. um, that's not to say that like, bigotry is not a broader societal problem, but sure. uh, what we're focused on is a sliver. Absolutely. So, um, last question I had. Um, yeah. Some people in this conference um, say things of you that aren't exactly. You're a little bit inf infamous here. Some people call you a smear, somebody who smears people, almost like a barnacle, just looking to tear other people down to kind of get some success for yourself. How would you respond to criticisms of yourself like that? I think my work speaks for itself. Uh, a lot of these people have not talked to me. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, they don't know my work. They just know what uh, you know. Maybe people I'm critical of. Uh, have to say in response to whatever criticism my work has levied. I think my work is fair and it's as accurate as I, I can make it. You know, at the time, I try to do my due diligence and be ethical as a reporter. Um, but, you know, you're not always going to have fans. Sure, uh, everybody has enemies. Were people openly hostile to you inside CPAC? Was anybody openly hostile? Yeah, yeah, I've had some people be hostile, but... What was your experience? Uh, people calling me slurs, uh, homophobic slurs, and uh, just name calling. But you know, it's that comes with the work, right? Absolutely. It's like what I report on is pretty intense stuff. So you know, if you're gonna, how do I say it? Like if you jump in the pool. To, can't always be yeah. surprised if you get wet. Well, I, I brought up one of the cr criticisms, too. It's that, like, you're only focused on bigotry from the right, but I guess right-wing watch, you guys, sh I don't know. People should be, be be concerned about bigotry across the board, right? Right. So, But I understand that you guys right. are mainly right-wing right, right -wing watch. Um, I wanted to thank you for your time and wanted to give you your opportunity. Is there anything else in conclusion that you wanted to mention? Um, no, you can check out our work at rightwingwatch.org. Uh, check us out on Twitter. And, uh, yeah, that's all I got. Thank you so much for your time, Absolutely. Mr. The infamous Jared Hall.